Our first lesson today is from Jonah, verses 310 to 411 on page 1438 of your pew Bible. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, O oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? This is why I was so quick to flee to Tarsh. I knew that you are gracious and compassionate. Great and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Have you any right to be angry? Jonah went out and sat down in the place east of the city. And there he made himself a shelter and sat in its shade and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a vine and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the vine. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed through the vine so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, do you have a right to be angry about the vine? I do, he said, I'm angry enough to die. But the Lord said, you've been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. But Nivea has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell the right hand from the left, and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. It's the parable of the workers in the vineyard. It goes like this. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About the third hour, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go out and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the 11th hour came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered them, Friend, am I not being unfair to you? Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? 
Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who is hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Please pray with me. Dear God, may these words burrow themselves deep into our hearts and minds and change us from within to be more generous. Amen. In May of 2010, a woman named Kelly Ellis was hired at Google to be a level three software engineer. A few weeks later, another new hire joined the Google team. This man had graduated from college the same year as Kelly Ellis did, and she noticed that both of them had the exact same four years of work experience. But for some reason, the new man had been hired in as a level four software engineer, the next step up on the pay grade. Not long after that, she noticed that Google hired a bunch of other male computer engineers fresh out of college with no work experience and placed them all in level three positions with her. When Kelly went to her manager with her concerns, she was told not to worry, that Google would correct the level. So she applied for a level four position in the company. She was denied that position and was told that even though she was doing the work of a level four position, that she would be only receiving the pay and benefits of a level three. <coughs> Other female employees at Google started telling similar stories. They reported not being promoted like their male colleagues were, and they were held back in non-technical positions that had no advancement opportunities. Through an in-house survey at Google, it was discovered that the majority of the female employees at Google were also being paid less on average than the men doing the exact same work. So their bonus checks were always smaller. So in 2017, Kelly Ellis and a group of other female Google employees filed a class action lawsuit against Google for unfair and unlawful business practices and being in violation of the California Equal Pay Act. They were also suing for failure to pay wages due for discharged and quitting employees. The case dragged on for years, and Google finally settled out of court without admission or findings in 2022. Google agreed to pay $118 million to 15,000 female Google employees. That came out to about $7,800 per person. They had and were forced to be more generous. Now, fair pay for a day's work is something that has always been a concern for employees everywhere and especially for day laborers. In 2010, a group of students from Seton Hall University School of Law did some research for the Center of Social Justice. They studied the day workers who were working there in New Jersey. Now the day laborer system in the United States is practically unchanged since biblical times. People who need work congregate in the early morning in various known places like Home Depot parking lots. The employers who need cheap daily labor, typically for farm or maybe for construction cleanup projects, come by with a truck and verbally offer the people standing around some amount of cash for a day's worth of their work. Those who have agreed to the offer would get into the back of the truck and they would be driven to the work site so that they can work all day. <clears throat> typically, if everything goes according to plan, 
The day laborer would receive their cash at the end of the day and then would be dropped back off in the evening at the same pickup spot. Day laborers work with no written contract, no names, no social security numbers, no taxes, and no commitments for work tomorrow. And as such, abuses of these people in the system are rampant. This underground pool of laborers are typically poor, undocumented people with limited English skills. As immigrants, they are too afraid of deportation to go to the authorities to report any abuses by their employers. So the New Jer Jersey students found that the conditions that the day laborers were working under were actually horrendous. 48% of the workers participating in their survey said that they had the experience of not being paid for their day's worth of work at least once in the past year. 54% of them had the experience of not being paid as much as had been promised to them in the morning. 94% reported not being paid overtime as required by state and federal law, and 43% were not provided basic safety equipment, such as goggles or hard hats on a construction site. 35% had been abandoned at their work site with no daily wages and no ride back to town at the end of the day. And to make the abuse even worse, 46% of those New Jersey day laborers in 2010 who were surveyed by these students reported being physically assaulted by their employer. 14% had wages in excess of $1,000 stolen from them. The students summarized their findings. These immigrant day laborers are being robbed, injured, and beaten with impunity because of weak, under-enforced, and antiquated labor laws. Wow. Well, it isn't too much of a stretch for our imaginations to think that the typical conditions for day laborers in the time of Christ were just as bad as they were in New Jersey in 2010. With the heavy taxes required by the Roman government, people who lost their ancestral land would try to work as a day laborer in order to keep from falling into debt and being thrown into debtor's prison or sold into slavery for what they owed. There was little or no protection from unfair employers, since the Romans tended to only protect things that would actually pay them taxes. A day laborer in Jesus' time could only hope for payment at the end of the long day and would pray that they wouldn't be cheated out of it or that it would be stolen from them before they could buy food with the money earned with their hands and through their work of their back. Just like many of the people who are working today, their life was difficult, uncertain, and completely a hand-to-mouth existence. And so, today, when we read in our passage of the incredible generosity of the landowner to these day laborers, we should be completely and totally surprised. The landowner would have been perfectly within his rights to only pay those who work just a fraction of the day to only give them a fraction of what he had contracted with those who worked the whole day. Both in the first century and today, it would have been the expected thing to do. It is unheard of to pay an hourly employee for time that they actually do not work. If the landowner had followed the usual way of doing things, he could have maximized his profits and then he could have had enough money left over to hire even more workers the next day. But instead of being a shrewd and savvy businessman and making himself even richer, the landowner instead put the welfare of the laborers above his own profits. This is the big point of this parable, the outrageously generous part 
that really still surprises us today. Who has ever heard of a boss paying for work that wasn't done? But that is the point. God's kingdom isn't about doing business as usual. God's kingdom turns upside down the world's priorities and looks at things a completely different way. In the kingdom of heaven, making sure that the poor and the forgotten thrive is more important than increasing your bank balance and turning a tidy profit. God's kingdom takes a look at other people and where they are and tries to help them so that they can better themselves. At the Roswell United Methodist Church in Roswell, Georgia, this church has stepped up and created a ministry that helps people to thrive in an unusual but very effective way. About once a month, on a Monday night, the church puts on a massive job networking event. The format is always the same. Starting at 12.30 or 1 in the afternoon, there are 12 different workshops that job seekers can come and attend. The titles of the seminars cover everything from owning your own business boot camp to resume writing to get through the black hole. At 5.30 p.m., the church hosts a dinner for everyone who attends and features a speaker during the dinner. The suggested donation for the dinner is only $3. Following dinner, there are more workshops designed to help people by giving them mock interviews or even one-on-one -on -one resume reviews. The church also maintains a business wear clothes closet in the church basement that job seekers can go to to select a full new interview outfit if they need one. In addition to the job seeker events, the church also brings in employers, employers that are hiring, and gives them space to interview future employees right there at the church. Each event, each night, is also sponsored by a different potential employer. At 8 p.m., the job networking night always ends with a motivational speaker. And the most shocking and generous thing about this event is that the entire price for this afternoon and evening of networking and important job seeker information and interviewing is zero dollars and zero cents. Thousands of their neighbors come through the church doors every year and build relationships with the church volunteers as they get the information and the help and the encouragement that they need in order to find a new job. By giving their neighbors a generous helping hand when they need it, by living into the outrageous generosity of the gospel, the Roswell United Methodist Church is huge. They are thriving. They have over 7,000 members. At the worship services, job seekers may come and learn that the generosity of Roswell United Methodist Church is being given to them because God has also dealt with humanity so generously. It's not due to anything that we have done, but it is due to the loving generosity of our God that we are offered eternal life through Jesus Christ either early on at the beginning of our life or even later on at the end. My friends, in conclusion, when we look at our scripture passage today, we can see that our God is an absolutely generous God, one who wants to spend eternity with us. We don't need to work our entire lives in order to deserve to receive the gen generous benefit of being in eternal joy and peace with God after we die. It is free. We just need to say yes to God's job offer, to be God's disciple, and to be a worker in God's kingdom. 
Unlike human bosses who feel they can often pay women or perhaps the undocumented less than men, or some dishonest employers who cheat their employees out of what they have earned, our God is generous and kind and far more loving than anything humanly possible. For our God, money is not what matters, and increasing profits is not how our God keeps score. What matters to our God is increasing the number of loving relationships and the expansion of God's kingdom to all. For our God, it is people and not profits that matter the most. So my friends, today you and I are being asked by God if we will accept God's offer to work as God's day laborers today. Our pay will be an eternity of love and joy and peace in heaven. Will you do it? Will you work for God's kingdom? I pray that we all will. So be it. Amen.